let's consider a square of size 1 and uh, draw a diagonal uh, make a right triangle uh, also of size 1 whose hypotenuse is the same as the uh, diagonal of the square which by the Pythagorean theorem is square root of 2. Now imagine a bug sitting at the point A and going towards the point B up here. It can either go along the sides of the square or up the diagonal. If it goes along the sides of the square, it will travel a distance of two units versus uh, shortest path along the hypotenuse of the diagonal, which is the square root of two units. What if we have uh, more steps so, or more uh, changes? We have, in this case, two bumps. And uh, you notice that if the bug travels from the bottom to the top up here, uh, along the orange path, it will stay closer to the diagonal throughout the journey than if it had moved along the sides of the triangle. But moving along the orange path doesn't reduce the amount of walking for the bug because by the time it reaches the top, it will have moved uh, one unit to the right and one unit up, so a total of two units. And that happens to be exactly the same number that we get if we add more steps. Uh, here we have three stages. And uh, as the bug moves uh, along the orange path, it stays closer to the diagonal than if it goes along uh, the previous two paths. But the amount of distance that the bug travels is still the same as before. One unit to the right and one unit up. Now, if we keep adding steps, let's say we have a large n, uh, n steps, uh, we will, as you can see, we stay pretty close to the diagonal. But uh, the length of the orange path is still 2, not uh, square root of 2. For very large n, the staircase curve will look a lot like the diagonal, and yet its length is still 2. As n goes, it grows larger and larger, as, and it goes to infinity, the staircase path that you see here uh, flattens out into the diagonal and becomes the diagonal. The problem, all of these paths had length 2, but the diagonal now has length the square root of 2. Hence the paradox. Here is an alternative version of the paradox, where instead of 2 versus the square root of 2, we have 4 versus pi. See the video links in the description for this video. I'll talk about the paradox, uh, paradoxical situation with the staircase curves in part 2 of this video, but for now, Let's talk about a couple of explanations that are offered, but are generally not true. One is that the staircase curves converge to a fractal shape, not the diagonal itself, and somehow the bumps don't go away. But if you notice uh, what's happening uh, to the steps, as we keep adding more and more steps, the heights of these steps uniformly approach the diagonal and uh, at the end they will become flat identical with the diagonal so there is no fractal curve left uh, the next thing that's offered is that the staircase curves are jagged and 
the derivatives don't exist at the corner points, but I'll show you next that why this is not true either. To see why the existence of sharp corner points and where the derivatives fail to exist has nothing to do with this uh, paradox, uh, I need to draw graphs or sketch graphs that are not easy to draw by hand. So I'll use an excerpt from my book, Achieving Infinite Resolution, that is linked in the video description. Uh, here I have taken the zigzag pass, uh, turn them around so that the hypotenuse of the triangle uh, or the diagonal is uh, lying on the x-axis. You can see that uh, here we have a one step situation. Here is a two steps uh, and uh, three steps and four. <clears throat> so four steps are drawn, four, four stages are drawn. And uh, in this case, uh, in this picture, let's not worry about the numbers on the x and y axis. I'll talk about those in the uh, part two of this video. Now let's take a look at these curves, sinusoidal curves that we see here. Um, these uh, CNs are coefficients. The exact value of those is not important for our discussion here. This picture shows uh, uh, four of these curves. Uh, here's n equal to one. If we just put n equal to one, we get this big curve. n equal to two gives us these two bump curve. n equal to three is down here, which has three bumps, uh, and so on. You'll notice a resemblance to the staircase curves that we talked a minute ago. Here's a snapshot of two separate stages where we see the analogs of the triangle and the diagonal. In this graph, the staircase paths are superimposed on the sinusoidal curves. Here's n equal to 1 and the corresponding staircase path, uh, which is the main triangle. The first step, here's n equal to 2, and uh, so on. Notice that each segment of the staircase path corresponds uniquely to a piece of the sinusoidal path um, curve. And this is true for each segment. There is a piece of a smooth curve. Uh, further, the length of each uh, staircase path uh, segment is a straight the length of a straight line and therefore shorter than the corresponding piece of the sine curve. Uh, adding things up, the total length of the sine curve at each stage turns out to be larger than the total length of the corresponding staircase curve. We already know that the staircase curves always have length 2. Therefore, the sine curves must have length bigger than 2, uh, which is, uh, of course, bigger than the square root of 2, 1.41. Or two, and uh, that's just the length of the diagonal. So we see that sharp corners don't explain the parallel. Now I should point out that derivatives do play a role when they exist, as in the case of the sinusoidal curves. Uh, but the role is more subtle. The explanation is in the same book containing this graph. If you're curious, we now end part one of this video. In part two, we analyze the staircase curve and uncover the reason for the quantitative reason for the length mismatch 2 versus the square root of 2. We use that result to construct the staircase-like paths whose lengths do converge to the length of the diagonal as they do. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you in part two.